Prior to the events of Fallout 3, a splinter group led by Pout and Kasten broke away from the Brotherhood of Steel and formed the Outcast. The Outcasts play an underwhelming role in the base game, but they were once planned to be much grander. When looking at side quests in Fallout 3's game files, they go from being numbered internally MS-06 straight to MS-08. This cut quest name is unknown, but there's a massive number of unused empty dialogue topics linked to MS-07. While these lines are missing, their topic names give us an idea of how the quest would have played out. There are several topics about requesting unity and another to reject it, implying this quest revolved around the re unification of the Brotherhood and Outcast. Despite being cut, this event would become canon in Fallout 4, where it's revealed these factions reunited under Elder Maxon. Scribe Bowditch has many lines linked to this quest that are used in the final game, and it's possible he was the quest-giving NPC. There's a few topics that have placeholder lines used for testing. I can't decide now, no brother, perhaps another time, and yes please in this quest, but it's unclear which characters these belong to. Most notably you can ask him if there's a way to reconcile the two factions. Lyons and Kasdan would have to agree to any sort of reconciliation and that's pretty unlikely. They're both quite proud and stubborn. Me, I just wish there was a way we could all agree that at least we're still on the same side. There are bigger problems out there after all. He mentions that Sarah Lyons and Protector Kasten would have to come to an agreement, suggesting that both characters played a major role. Kasten also has two empty topics where the player would have questioned him, perhaps about what it would take for the outcast to rejoin the Brotherhood. You can ask characters in both the Brotherhood and Outcast about the conflict between them. Many of these lines, like those of Defender Rockfowl, Defender Morgan, Protector Kasten, and Elder Lyons, are all also linked to MS-07. It seems the developers attempted to repurpose as much cut content from this as they could. By far the most fascinating aspect of this storyline is that it prominently featured aliens. A remnant of this seems to have survived in the outcast section of the official guide. In their eyes, they are the true Brotherhood of Steel, carrying on the mission of the main West Coast contingent. They proudly wear the name Outcast, anything to further disassociate them from lions. It's also important to note that the Brotherhood's concentration on acquiring advanced technology means they have their obsessions, including the procurement of alien weapons from anywhere in the capital wasteland, including possible crashed UFO and pre-war government installations. There's two cut signs linked to the quest that seemingly would have appeared at the pre-war government installations referenced in the guide. These were the Bureau of Special Affairs and the Center for Extratypical Research. Their names suggest these were clandestine divisions of the American government that researched aliens, and it looks like the Brotherhood was meant to pick up where they left off. It's possible these signs would have appeared at the Citadel and Fort Independence. Several cut topics are about working on a mysterious artifact, and recovering it for the Brotherhood seems to have been one of the main objectives. There's a very interesting item named MS-07 Disc, and it's different from every other holotape used in the series. It's possible this strange disc is the artifact, and it might even be extraterrestrial in origin. Topics like Sarah Found Item, Sarah Lion Strike, and Item Return seem to be about the disc as well, implying the player either joined up with Sarah Lyons to find it or brought it back to her. Another topic, Item Already Have, suggests you could have found the artifact before starting the quest. There's a terminal entry at the Citadel linked to MS-07. Further investigations into the UFO codename Paladine have confirmed our suspicions. On the evening of May 3rd, 2062, an alien craft of unknown make and origin did indeed breach the airspace just north of Hagerstown, Maryland, and crashed into a heavily wooded non-residential area. Unfortunately, attempts to retrieve the craft proved unsuccessful. It simply could not be located, either due to some kind of advanced invisibility shielding, or because the occupants managed to make repairs and vacate the crash site before our arrival. 
Despite our failure of recovery, the significance of this event cannot be denied. We are not alone. There is a crashed UFO found at the location Alien Crash Site, and perhaps this location was a core part of the quest. This is simply speculation, but maybe the artifact would have led you to the crash ship. It's possible the alien blaster was originally involved too, as you can trade the weapon and its ammo to Kasten during the unmarked quest Outcast Collection Agency. Ford Independence has some notable oddities. When visiting for the first time, a group of raiders tries to attack the outcast. After the raiders are defeated, Kasdan appears and the marker he uses to do this is linked to MS-07. There's another marker outside the fort using the quest prefix, but it isn't used in any way. Protector Kasdan was voiced by Gregory Gordon and he sounds like this. I'm Protector Kasdan and I'm in charge of protecting this sort of technology from abuse and misuse. There's a holotape at the fort that was supposedly made by Kasten, but it was recorded by an entirely different unknown voice actor. This recording is also notable because it seems to have been made before the outcasts split away from the Brotherhood. We have secured the building and are currently implementing our orders for the occupation of Fairfax. Raider activity in town has increased since we first took up positions in and around the fort. We've killed a lot of them and scared off others, but they just keep coming back. Their numbers seem limitless, while requests for our own reinforcements are repeatedly denied. That the raiders take such continued risks to invade our facility appears to confirm suspicions that we've had an intelligence leak. They've tried tenaciously to infiltrate the base, but so far haven't stood a chance. Our objective remains the same. Protect the research personnel. Fender Rockfowl was voiced by Peter Papa George, and he sounds like this. Defender Rococo Rockfowl, at your service. There's a holotape attributed to Rockfowl, but it seems to have been recorded by voice actor Jeff Baker instead. Defender Morgan and I executed a reconnaissance mission last night to gauge raider entrenchment in the structural underground of Fairfax. We located three entrances into underground utility tunnels and confirmed the enemy has occupied and fortified these positions. Some are undefended. We also identified a small weapons cache in the southeast section of the tunnels. We were compromised by a patrol while placing explosives here. In accordance to mission parameters, we did not engage, instead retreating to base. Raiders will be likely to attach more patrols to that area now. There's also an additional, unused set of these lines recorded by yet another actor, giving Rockfowl the distinction of having three separate voices. Defender Morgan and I executed a reconnaissance mission last night to gauge raider entrenchment in the structural underground of Fairfax. We located three entrances into underground utility tunnels and confirmed the enemy has occupied and fortified these positions. Some are undefended. We also identified a small weapons cache in the southeast section of the tunnels. We were compromised by a patrol while placing explosives here. In accordance to mission parameters, we did not engage, instead retreating to base. Raiders will be likely to attach more patrols to that area now. The most likely explanation for these holotapes is there was a recording mix-up and the wrong actors read these lines. If you break into the fort, the outcasts become hostile and attack you. Trading enough equipment to cast in makes the outcast inside the fort friendly, but you're still forced to break in. I'm guessing the player initially gained access to the fort during MS-07, and there's even a cut topic called Entry Request. It seems the entrance never becoming unlocked is an unintended consequence of this quest being cut. When the outcast broke away, they created a new system of ranks, Protector, Defender, and Specialist. NPCs that hold the rank of Protector and Defender appear, but Specialists are only referenced in terminal entries. Specialists are the outcast equivalent of Brotherhood Scribes, and one would later appear in the Operation Anchorage DLC, but they were originally intended for the core game. There's a deleted character named Specialist Aberdeen who was meant to be found at the fort. Presumably he and other specialists would have worn the outcast scribe robe worn by Owen. Nothing remains except for his AI packages and some markers, but these do give us an idea of his daily schedule. Specialist Aberdeen would eat, sleep, and even use the bathroom on the upper floor of the fort. Another would bring him to an outcast lab in the afternoon, but this area seems to be unrelated to the Alien Brotherhood storyline. 
He also has two intriguing AI packages that would bring him to another lab in the lower level, and these are linked to a marker named MS-07 weight. There's no evidence to support this, but it's possible there was an alien autopsy. This marker is placed in what looks to be an operating room, there's a dead alien at the crash site, and autopsies are a popular trope often seen in sci-fi media. The discovery of a technologically advanced enemy would have been enough from a narrative standpoint to justify the rival groups reuniting. There's an outcast variation of Brotherhood recon armor. It's actually better than the Brotherhood of Steel version, as the helmet provides plus one to perception. This armor suggests there was meant to be an outcast variation of Brotherhood initiates, but all of the outcasts wear power armor in the final game. There's an unused outcast variant of Mr. Gutsy. It uses the visual appearance of the US Army version, but there's also an unused texture for an outcast variant. There's also an unused line for an outcast Mr. Handy, but there are no outcast variants of this robot in the final game. Kasdan said you're clear. Kasdan also has AI packages to sleep and use the bathroom at the fort, but he never goes inside the interior in the final game. The naming convention of some lines suggests there were multiple endings, and two topics are tantalizingly named Double Cross. Perhaps the player could have double crossed both factions and taken the alien technology for themselves. Considering the Outcast already betrayed Lion's Brotherhood of Steel once, it's feasible they would have tried again with the player's help. There's lines about reward training, and you might have earned power armor training through this quest, though it could be referring to a totally different kind of training. Another topic reveals there would have been Galaxy News radio broadcast about the events that took place, which would have been a cool instance of reactivity. There's an in-game GNR segment that seems to reference the quest too. Tensions continue to mount between the courageous forces of the Brotherhood of Steel and their estranged brethren, the Outcasts. Now, normally, family squabbles are none of my business. But when the Outcasts decide to take pot shots at my building, which the Brotherhood uses as an outpost, I make an exception. So, Brotherhood Outcasts, knock it off! I prefer not to get murdered in my own backyard. The rest of you Brotherhood cats, can't you extend an olive branch or something? You'd think fighting the super mutants would be enough. The Game of the Year edition guide has an interesting section on aliens. Once thought to be covered up by a government conspiracy and believed only by crackpot groups such as the Quire Virum, evidence of extraterrestrial life can be traced back throughout human history, but became nationally recognized after the mysterious disappearance of the Clarabella 7 space pod during the 1960s space race. It is said that alien technology was the basis of many of the Enclave's more exotic and impressive weaponry and and robotics, and even toy manufacturers such as Wilson Atomatoys weren't immune to these accusations. After the discovery of an alien body in Fort Bannister, the shocking truth was revealed. The aliens are not only real and alive, but they're back, and they're pissed. There might be some element of MS-07 story that was recycled for the DLCs here, but it could just be flavor text for the guide. All of this evidence suggests the questline was relatively far along in development, but unfortunately Bethesda deleted critical aspects like dialogue and code that makes it impossible to restore. There's enough left over to speculate wildly on, but not enough to be sure of anything. It's not even clear why this was cut, as it had a genuinely cool premise that could have fleshed out the outcast and their conflict against the Brotherhood. Further, it could have acted as a narrative hook for Mothership Zeta and Operation Anchorage. These changes would have made Fallout 3 into an even better game. Ultimately though, all of this was left on the cutting room floor. 